In this video, I want to look at some examples of past examination questions and their solutions. So I'll begin with uh, example one. So the question says, a company ships its products of mass M in a package of mass M as shown in figure Q4 below. Experience shows that this method is satisfactory. To reduce costs, it is proposed to package two products, each of mass M in a package of mass 2M as shown in figure Q4B. So let's see the two diagrams before we continue. So this is uh, the first packaging system, system A with one product per package. Now, this is the proposed alternative packaging system B with two packages per package. So the question says, part A says, state the equations of motion for system A in matrix form and use the matrix iteration method to determine the lowest natural frequency and corresponding mode shape of system A. So, we're going to use, since the system, the equation did not say we should use Newton's law, Newton's laws or Lagrange's equation to, de to determine the equations of motion. We can just use the stiffness influence coefficient method to write down the equation of motion straight away. So just say straight away that equation of motion for system A is M zero zero M Y one double dot Y two double dot plus bracket 2k minus 2k minus 2k 4k y1 y2 equals 0 0. Now if you go back to a we see that the mass matrix m is the easiest to write. So on coordinate 1 there's one mass m, coordinate 2 there's one mass m. So therefore the mass matrix is m 0 0 m. When we come to the stiffness matrix then we know that for k11 the first the stiffness at the top left corner, K11, um, we look at coordinate one and we see the springs connected to this coordinate are two springs, K, K. So the K11 therefore will be 2K. So in the stiffness matrix, we write 2K. Then K22, we look at the second coordinate. Second coordinate is this box. And there are how many springs connected to it? One, two, three, four. So therefore K22 will be 4K. So therefore, when you look at the stiffness matrix, you see 2K for K11 and 4K for K22. Then when we look at uh, K12, so between coordinates one and two, how many springs are there? There's this spring and there's also this spring. So there are two springs. So therefore it will be 2K and we stick a minus before it. So K21 will be the same. And that's why the stiffness matrix is like this, 2K minus 2K minus 2K, 4K. We can write this equation in abbreviated form as MY double dot plus KY equal to zero. We add the mass matrix M equals M into 1001 0, 0, 1, and stiffness matrix K equals 2K into one minus one minus one two. So we are asked to use the matrix iteration method. So now the displacement vector y is y1, y2 transpose. So the steady state solution of equation two, this equation is y equals y exponential j omega t. So if we, sub if we differentiate this equation two times and substitute in the equation, substitute three in the equation two, then we'll get omega squared my uppercase y equals k times uppercase y, uppercase y. If you pre-multiply this equation then by k inverse, then, and divide through by omega squared, then we can rewrite this equation as dy equals lambda y. We are d, the dynamical matrix is k inverse times m, and lambda equals one over omega squared. So this is the standard form of the eigenvalue problem. 
You now need to determine what D is. So we start off by determining K. So K inverse um, will simply be one over K times the adjoint of K divided by the determinant of K. This here transposed is the adjoint of K and the determinant will simply be 2k squared minus k squared. So we'll get k inverse as 1 over 2k into 2, 1, 1. 2, 1, 1, 1. Therefore, the dynamical matrix D will be k inverse, which is 1 over 2k times 2, 1, 1, 1, 1 times m. So m into 1, 0, 0, 1. So that will simply give us m over 2k into 2, 1, 1, 1. So in order to obtain the lowest mode, we make an initial guess for the eigenvector of the lowest mode. So I've assumed it y sub one to be one and 0 0.6. This is actually an educated guess. And the way I've come about this educate, educated guess is that I've looked at the setup and I've said, okay, mass, this mass M at coordinate one has only two prints two springs attached to it. But the box coordinate two has four springs attached to it. So therefore I've assumed that the mass at coordinate one is more mobile than the box because the mass at coordinate one has only two springs. So that's why I've assumed that if this mass moves with a magnitude, displacement magnitude, one relative displacement magnitude one, then the box of a zoom will move with a smaller value, which I've set set at um, 0 0.6, 0 0.6. So I've, therefore, I zoom y sub one to be one point zero and zero point six transpose. And if I come back again to say I've done that, I've made that educated guess, it's simply really to say that if the relative displacement of this is one, then this second and the uh, mass M2, which has four springs attached to it, therefore it will be four springs 4K over the 4K for mass two plus the 2K for mass one. So that's um, effectively four over six, which is two thirds. So that's 0 0.67, but I've approximated it as 0.6 as my starting point. So, so that's an educated or engineering guess for the eigenvector, for the um, trial vector. So I will then start the iteration by saying dy equals, so that, that is d, the dynamical matrix times y1, y sub one, one, 0.6. So I multiply out this. Um, I'll multiply this matrix by this vector, and then I'll get m over 2k into 2.6, 1.6. So I'll then normalize by the biggest number, which is 2.6. So I bring that out of the bracket and then divide each item in the bracket by 2.6. So I'll get 1.00 there and 0.62 here. This then will become my y sub two. So th this is the new, um, the second trial vector, which I'll use on the next line here for my next line of my iteration. So I'll say equals, there's an equal sign here. So dy, dy2 equals m over 2k into 21111, 1.00, 0.62. So I multiply out again, I get m over 2k to 2.62, uh, 1.62. So this time around, I bring 2.62 out of the bracket and I end up with 1.00.62. Now, since this vector and the previous vector are the same, then I've achieved convergence. Hence, this coefficient will be my lambda one. So lambda one, which equals one over omega one squared will be 2.62 M over 2K. That will imply that omega one will be point. Eight seven square root of k over m. 
And then simultaneously, the mode shape or eigenvector Y1 will be 1.00, 0 0.62 transpose. So to two decimal places, I've needed to do only two iterations. If I want to increase the uh, number of decimal places to three, I probably will need to carry out the iterations uh, three or four times. I need to do three or four iterations. Now, the next part of the question says, state the equations of motion for system B in matrix form and use the matrix iteration method to determine the lowest natural frequency and corresponding mode shape of system B. So system B now has a three degree of freedom system. So again, to write down the equation of motion, the mass matrix will write by inspection, this coordinate one. So on the leading diagonal, we'll put M for coordinate one, M for coordinate two, and then two M for coordinate three. So the linear diagonal will have m, m, to m, but all the up diagonal terms will be zeros. So that will be the mass matrix. So I've shown here, that is the mass matrix. Then we need to determine the stiffness matrix. So for K11, K11 here, we've got two springs. So K11 will be 2K. K12, well, okay, let's do, do the leading diagonal stiffnesses first. So K11 will be 2K. K22, two springs will also be 2K. Uh, but then K33, if we look carefully, we we'll see that there are four springs attached to coordinate three. This spring, this spring, this spring, this spring. So therefore K33 will be 4K. So on the leading diagonal, of the stiffness matrix will have 2K, 2K, and 4K. Now, for the off diagonal elements of the stiffness matrix, so the first is K12. So between coordinate one and two, there's a spring K. So therefore, we we'll put minus K. Between K13, between coordinate one and coordinate three, this coordinate three here, there's a spring also. So we'll put minus K. Right? So, as I've just said, put minus k and minus k. So carry on. For k two one, we could coordinate two and one is one spring, so minus k. For k two three, between coordinate two and coordinate three, there's one spring. Okay, so put minus k. K31 between coordinate three and one one spring, so minus K. And then K32 between coordinate three here and coordinate two, one spring, so minus K. So the stiffness matrix will simply be 2K minus K minus K minus K, 2K minus K, minus K minus K and 4K. So therefore this here is the equation of motion which you can rewrite as m y double dot plus k y equals to zero. We had the mass matrix m is m into one zero 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 one zero 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 two. And the stiffness matrix k is k into two minus one minus one, minus one, two minus one, minus one, minus one, four. <clears throat> so the next task then is to find the inverse of k. So by definition, K inverse equals the adjoint of K divided by the determinant of K. To find the adjoint of K, we'll find the cofactors and then transpose them. And then we divide that result by the determinant of K. So therefore for this example, K inverse will be one over six K into seven, five, three, Five seven three 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 three. Using the rule for determining the inverse matrix, inverse of K. Therefore, D, the dynamical matrix, which is equal to K inverse times M, will be M over six K into seven five six five seven six three three six. We now want to carry out the matrix iteration. So as before. I've assumed that the 
mass is attached to coordinate one and two are more mobile. So I've assigned them a relative amplitude of one each. Now for the mass attached to coordinates three, I've assumed that its mobility is restricted. So I've assigned it a mobility relative amplitude of 0 0.4. So starting with this trial vector then, the first line of my iteration will be this dy cos m over 6k, 756, 576, 336 times this trial vector 1, 1, 0 0.4. So multiplying the matrix by the vector, I'll get m over 6k into 14.4, 14.4. So I will take the largest number, I'll bring it out of the bracket. So I will normalize the numbers in the bracket. So I'll get 14.4 M, 6K into 1, 1, 0 0.58. Then take this trial vector two, this second trial vector, I'll use it in the next line of my iteration. M over 6K into 756, 576, 336 times 1, 1, 0 0.58. Multiplying out and normalizing by the biggest number, I will now end up with 15.48 M over 6K times the vector 1, 1, 0 0.61. This vector then becomes my next trial vector. So this is third trial vector, which I use on the next line for the iteration. So carrying this iterative step, forward, I will end up with this coefficient and this vector. I'll then use this vector as my fourth trial vector on the next line for the iteration. And I'll end up getting identically the same vector to two decimal places. So because this vector here is the same as the previous, I'll say I've achieved convergence. Therefore, this coefficient will be my lambda one. So lambda one will be 15.72 M over 6K. And we know that lambda one is also one over omega one squared. Therefore, I'll find omega one as 0.62 square root of K over M. And the vector is the eigenvector, which has been determined simultaneously. So the argon vector of mode shape therefore is 1, 1, 0 0.62 transpose. Then the third part of the question, part C, of the question says that given that the external excitation acting on the systems is sinusoidal and of frequency omega equals 0.4 square root of Q over M, state whether you will approve this proposal. So in other words, we need to test whether this proposal in part B of putting two products in the package is acceptable. So the notes actually already say do the calculations only to two decimal places. So for this part C, I will make this a statement that since omega one B, omega one B in part B this here 0.62 square root of K over M is greater than Omega, omega is the excitation frequency of the external excitation is 0.4 square root of K over M. So since omega B, which is 0.62 square root of K over M is greater than omega, which is equal to 0.4 K over M. And the ratios of the amplitudes of products to amplitude of package of B are identical to that of A, then the proposal is approved. Yeah. So this ends the solution to this first example questions from a past examination paper.